the latest incident or the previous incidents causing the U.S. to reevaluate in any way the role that it's uh, playing in the situation in terms of its relationship with Saudi Arabia? Look, we provide a tremendous amount of humanitarian assistance uh, in Yemen to try to support uh, civilians in Yemen and try to mitigate uh, against the, um, the devastation that's taken place there in that country. Yeah. I don't have anything more for you on that. But you also supply a tremendous amount of weaponry. <laughs> and the data for targeting to the Saudis. Well, then, sorry. Right? No? no? Am I wrong? No. Is that wrong? Sorry, uh, these ladies over here are laughing. Um, on that, I would refer you to the Department of Defense uh, that is involved with that. But you, as you know, Saudi Arabia is an important strategic partner in the region to the United States. That was the U.S. State Department Representative Heather Naubert talking to reporters following a Saudi airstrike that struck a school bus, killing 50 and injuring 63, mostly children. But don't you dare talk about that. Oh, hi, I'm the heretic. And my lords and masters in the CIA require me to inform you on a real menace to our civilization as we know it. A question whose consequences are so far-reaching that we may never fully comprehend the full implications for decades to come. This universe-destroying question did Brent Kavanaugh sexually assault a woman 36 years ago or not? Now who's Brett Kavanaugh? Who could possibly remember an incident that happened so long ago? Who cares? Well, you should, peasant, and this question should consume your every waking moment. It's super important that you pick a side in this game of he said, she said, and make sure that the orange Cheeto in the White House doesn't get his Supreme Court nominee confirmed by the Senate. Never mind the fact that this guy will never overturn Roe vs. Wade and will probably turn hardcore liberal status within 10 years, tops. You need to focus on it. Otherwise, we'd have to talk about the Yemeni conflict. We wouldn't want you to be knowledgeable about pesky things like historical context. For example, how Yemen had been a divided country since Shiite North Yemen gained independence from the collapsing Ottoman Empire in 1918. In 1967, the Sunni South Yemen gained its independence from the British and Sauds. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1990, both countries merged into one Yemen under the leadership of the North Yemeni High Priest of Statism. Unlike East and West Germany, however, significant tensions remained. A Shiite fundamentalist movement called the Houthis began pushing back against Saudi Sunniism, quickly devolving into radicalism. They seized control of the state in September 2014, forcing the president to cede power to his vice president under the promise to be more inclusive to Shia Muslims. Goes about as well as you'd imagine, and the vice president, a Sunni Muslim, fled to Saudi Arabia. Iran has been financially supporting the Shia Houthis. The Sauds, Sunnis, formed a military coalition with eight other Arab states and the private military company Academy, formerly Blackwater for some reason, providing ground and air forces to bolster Sunni government officials. The U.S. and British governments provide arms, intelligence, and logistics. The same U.S. and British intelligence that operates and finances the White Helmets in Syria, who were recently caught faking footage of a chemical attack before it could leak to the media. But ignore all that. Ignore any sort of context that might explain anything that's happening in that part of the world. We want you to think everything that happens there is completely arbitrary. After all, don't you sometimes wake up in the morning and want to kill everyone who disagrees with you politically? Oh wait, I mean, uh, hey, Judge Kavanaugh, did you know he gang-raped a woman? Yeah. There were these parties where women would sit in a room because they wanted to, and men would just wait in line to have their turn to gang-rape them because reasons. Never mind the fact that these women could have saved other girls the humiliation by coming forward 35 years ago, or the fact that no effort has been made to find any of the other women victimized in this way, or men who might have stood in that line. Never mind how there has been zero corroborating stories or even evidence to support any of these claims, but... This Kavanaugh stuff is extremely important, you see. Now, a public service announcement. You must 
forget about how the State Department informed Congress that the purpose of the Saudi coalition invasion into Yemen against the Iran-backed Houthi is to protect civilians, only for Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to ignore the rising civilian casualty count in Yemen according to a memo leaked to the Wall Street Journal to preserve $2 billion in arms sales. Oh, hold on a second. That can't be the only reason, right? No. According to the memo, the reason is to preserve future arms sales, too. Wait a minute. Mike Pompeo. Isn't that the same Mike Pompeo who originally told Congress that the war was about protecting civilians? The same war that has so far killed up to 70,000 civilians and put millions of Yemenis at the risk of starvation in probably the greatest humanitarian crisis of our time? Weird. No! Kavanaugh! You must focus on Kavanaugh! Wall-to-wall -wall media coverage on mainstream and alternative media. College courses must cease, because Kavanaugh is by far more important. Except, sadly, that might actually be true. We must divide the country on this issue, whether or not we can destroy one man's entire reputation based on nothing but allegations, and that it's up to Kavanaugh to prove his innocence. What's that you say? Burden of proof doesn't work that way, and you can't prove a negative? Well, that's only in a criminal trial, you silly goose. And it's super important that these victims of a literal crime report their attack to bureaucrats and politicians before they ever bring it up with actual law enforcement. Allegations that will almost certainly disappear the moment Kavanaugh is no longer a nominee like what happened with Herman Cain in 2012 and Judge Roy Moore, and they tried to do with Judge Clarence Thomas in 1991. More importantly, it must be all everyone ever talks about. There is absolutely nothing else going on in our increasingly chaotic world, and it is very important for the priesthood of statism that the dirty peasants they rule over remain entertained with the bread and circuses as one man's reputation is thrown to the lions. Otherwise, they might realize their tax dollars are taken from them by force to fund an ongoing campaign of murder and destruction in Yemen. Maybe, just maybe, if these ridiculous and transparently disingenuous displays of political theater were disregarded as the irrelevant sideshows that they were, we could actually talk about real issues that matter. Like asking why is the U.S. and Britain helping Saudi Arabia murder people? Saudi Arabia is a leading member of OPEC, who has an agreement with the U.S. to sell their oil in petrodollars. Now, I've talked about the petrodollar before with Esoteric Entity. I won't bore you with that. But the supply of weapons supposedly keeps Saudi Arabia safe. And if Sunni Saudi Arabia has a Shia neighbor to their south, they won't be safe. Such a disruption would increase oil prices, which would drive down demand for the petrodollar. Now because the priesthood of statism doesn't want to liberate the private sector so they can develop oil alternatives like fusion energy, or hell, even natural gas in shale, and would rather arm totalitarian theocracies to oppress their people and others, 70,000 civilians need to die. Questions? Comments? Critique? On a scale of 1 to 10, how done are you with the Kavanaugh Supreme Court nomination theater? What do you think about the fact that the U.S. is a sponsor to the wholesale slaughter of civilians as a matter of official government policy? Leave a comment below. Support me on Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.